Late last month, Turkish scientists completed a three-week expedition to the Arctic where they studied the effects of climate change and pollution on the region's ecosystem. Turkey's interest in the world's polar regions, although decades old, has seen recent boosts following several expeditions in the past few years. One of the world's last untapped frontiers in terms of energy and transportation, the geopolitical stakes in the Arctic region have never been higher. Several countries lay claim to large spots of the Arctic where global trade routes and potential energy fields converge. And those claims have often descended into open competition, especially for Russia, which has maritime disputes with several Arctic, mostly Western countries. And that rivalry is entering a more tense climate ever since Russia launched its attack on Ukraine in late February. So how different is the geopolitical landscape in the Arctic right now? And where does Turkey stand? given its close ties and cooperation with Russia in the Arctic and its partnership with the West. And to discuss the changing political climate of the Arctic, joining me from Oslo is Ari Mo. He is a research professor at the Fridyov Nansen's Institute, who specializes on Russia. And Ebru Jaimas from Çanakkale, Turkey. She is an assistant professor at Çanakkale Onsekiz Mart University, who writes extensively on the Arctic and Turkey's interests in the region. A warm welcome to you both, and thanks for joining me on Straight Talks. So, Ebru, what are the driving forces behind Turkey's ambitions to become a polar power, and where does it stand now? So first of all, let's uh, describe the uh, Arctic region a bit and why it's important for us. Uh, due to the negative effects of climate change, economic opportunities emerged by accelerated sea ice loss, opening of maritime routes in, routes in the Arctic, great power rivalry, and currently the Ukraine-Russia crisis have transformed the Arctic region into a dynamic yet fragmented space marked by high level of uncertainty. And the Arctic exceptionalism, which is based on the idea of an exceptional zone of peace and territory of dialogue, is now questionable. Uh, as far as Turkey, uh, unlike the uh, common assumption, Turkey is not a new actor in polar issues. Our interests in polar regions dates back to the second international polar year, 19. 1932-1933. Since then, we have attended all international polar years and currently Turkey's interests within the Arctic region are somehow related to yes. all seven seas of the Arctic. And these are namely climate, commodities, commerce, connectivity, communities, cooperation and competition. So it's very significant for us. So Ari, right can now. you speak on how important the polar regions have become, uh, as Ebru mentioned, both in terms of scientific, scientific research, um, possible energy resources, and of course politics? Well, uh, the changes in the environment due to climate change is, is obvious. And uh, research into climate change in the Arctic is very important for many countries to understand what is ahead for us. So that's clearly a driver for interest, like in the case of, of, of Turkey, or Turkey, as we say in Norwegian. But um, when it comes to resources, yes, this has, uh, the access to resources is also related to, uh, to the disappearing ice. Mm -hmm. uh, but one should uh, understand that uh, this is not only about ice, it's also about costs. And uh, in, in, in reality, the interest in the offshore resources has, is less today than it was, let's say, 10 years ago, because of the price of energy. Even if it has increased recently, it is not like it used to be 10 years ago. So offshore is not as in, uh, attractive as it used to be. But there are also resources onshore, and uh, especially in Russia, that are very important. And many uh, have looked at these resources as extremely attractive. Now, because of the conflicts within, uh, with Russia and Ukraine, mm -hmm. the outlook is much more uncertain. Yeah, the Arctic region, Ebro, is becoming a very crucial strategic battleground, as I understand. It is dubbed as one of the most pe peaceful uh, regions in the world. Could you elaborate on that and how member states' decision to suspend all contacts with uh, Russia due to the Ukraine crisis uh, changed the nature of the Arctic Council? 
I mean, how significant is this? It's so sad to hear that the activities of Arctic Council has been suspended, which negatively affects indigenous population across the region. It has also been decided to continue without Russia. So how about indigenous people in Russia? Over 5,000 sanctions against Russia has become a punishment for them as well. Therefore, the region no longer remains isolated from the global geopolitics compared to past. So increasing activities and competition make the region more strategically important than ever before. And unlike Antarctica, there are uh, 4 million people living in the Arctic. And in, inside those uh, 4 million people Arctic, living in the Arctic, and including indigenous communities and ethnonyms, in which Turkic people occupy a substantial percentage. Yes. Besides, in recent years, also, uh, several um, Turkish shipyards have attended tenders, especially within the Arctic region uh, in Russia, in the Russian Arctic region. And in some cases, they have become the sole contractor, uh, contractors. So we have, uh, on the one hand, scientific purposes, uh, especially uh, related to climate change. On the other hand, we have economic um, benefits from the region. So we need to help to uh, restore that balance in yes. that region. So, uh, Ariel, uh, what's your take on this uh, latest decision to suspend all contacts uh, with uh, Russia? What kind of impact will this have on indigenous people uh, as well as the environment in the region? And how is politics um, affecting the region? Is this a decision taken in the right direction? It is uh, very unfortunate because uh, there is a need for international cooperation in the Arctic. Indigenous issues is one thing, but environmental issues also demand international cooperation. So the sort of the freezing of, uh, of the contacts with Russia is, is a big problem because Russia is the biggest Arctic state, most mm -hmm. important Arctic states. But on the other hand, we must also understand that the fundamental legal framework for the Arctic is functioning, and that is the, the United Nations Law of the Sea Convention. And I think all Arctic states, including Russia, has interest in upholding the, uh, the principles and the, uh, and the law of the sea, which has been very beneficial for the Arctic coastal uh, states. So this means that there are very little conflict about boundaries and about uh, uh, maritime zones. There are some issues uh, outstanding, but, but not really very much. So the Arctic is still quite a very well, well regulated area. So, uh, Ebru, we know that Turkey wants to uh, become an observer state in the Arctic Council. What's the latest in that? And is it going to be uh, possible given the uh, current impasse at the Council? Uh, yeah. Recently, the Arctic issue has become a complicated yet delicate issue for Turkey, in which, in addition to our scientific institutions, the dedication of diplomatic parties has become essential, especially within our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Svalbard Treaty would propel our integration to the region. Turkey's decision to become a party to the treaty is the most concrete step highlighting its political will and diplomatic involvement at a global scale. But it is not enough. This is only the beginning. We need to produce concrete scientific um, uh, expeditions and concrete scientific results. Herein, based upon the soft power of science, science diplomacy may, may become a key to unify resilience efforts pertaining to the Arctic via opening new and alternative channels for communication among the conflicting states. Yes. And then we can talk about uh, our integration as well. So Ariel, if Turkey became an observer, how could it contribute uh, to the both, Ar uh, both uh, Arctic region, uh, Arctic Council, I'm sorry, and the region? And why do you think the uh, council seems hesitant to increase the number of observers? Well, to answer the last question first, I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of a question, a practical question. If uh, the meetings of the Arctic Council are usually taking place in small, small uh, spots in the Arctic, and it, it's becoming problematic that this is becoming such a big assembly. But talking about uh, influence and, and uh, effects, well, the Arctic Council is a place where a lot of information is shared and also where ag agendas are being shaped. Uh, so it's important uh, that, that a big country uh, like Turkey is aware of what's going on and can give their inputs. 
But I must say the most important work in the Arctic Council takes place in the working groups and the various research projects sponsored by the Arctic Council. And Turkey is already able to participate there if, if they want to. So uh, it's not necessary to wait to become an observer to become engaged in international research in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. So um, another powerful country with eyes on the region is China. Uh, which called itself near Arctic nation in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. What's that, China, what's that say for China and why it is investing billions of dollars into that region? As I, uh, as I already said, um, there are several economic opportunities emerging in the region. And at the same time, uh, due to the effect, negative effects of climate change, and they are... Uh, their main assumption is and their main motivation is they are the first country to be affected those by those negative uh, effects of climate change so it's both scientifically and economically important for china but their motivation behind their motivation uh, actually their nearest neighbor uh, the term nearest neighbor is taken from england britain uh, they are the first country defining themselves neighbor to the Arctic. So uh, China, in this term, uh, in a way, imitating their uh, main motivation. So uh, both strategically in terms of economic reasons behind it yes. and scientifically uh, in terms of climate change, it's very significant. Not only for China, for the rest, for the all, both Arctic and non-Arctic countries, yes. the region is highly significant right now. So what's your take on this Chinese uh, interest in the region, Ariel? And is the region poised to become a new battlefield uh, between the uh, US and China? No, I think that is that the impression is uh, ex exaggerated. Uh, China's uh, strategic security interests are somewhere else. And that's in the South, South China Sea, East China Sea. But uh, so I don't see China as becoming an important military actor in the Arctic. But as just been said, they have interest in economic development and very also serious research ambitions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the Chinese interests, the impression has been somewhat exaggerated because uh, 10 years ago they had a very, very, very expansive plans and ideas about the Arctic. They have become more realistic. Uh, and they, but they are also they are active. And when it comes to to shipping, we have a big uh, Chinese uh, shipping company, uh, Costco, as being perhaps the most important non-Russian company doing business in, in the Arctic. Okay, all right, Ebru and Ariel. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.